Hello everyone, this is CircuitPython Weekly for Tuesday, May 28th, 2024. This is time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday like this week. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. And this meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is state of CircuitPython libraries and Bolinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. And then hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing the last week, since the last meeting, and what you'll be up to over the next week. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, we'll get started with community news. And so big headlines on the board this week, 500 plus microcontroller boards now run CircuitPython. Last week, the number of boards that directly run on CircuitPython exceeded 500. As of this newsletter, it's 503 and climbing. And then two new CircuitPython releases. As CircuitPython inches closer to version 9.1, a new beta is out as well as new maintenance release for CircuitPython 9.0. CircuitPython 9.0 Beta 9.1.0 Beta 3 is a beta for CircuitPython 9.1.0 and is a new unstable release. And then CircuitPython 9.0.5 is the latest bug fix for leaks of CircuitPython and it's the latest new stable release. And then Project of the Week, the Space Mouse Wireless. The adventure of making a DIY Space Mouse using USB HID and sensors in CircuitPython. And I have to say that was a very interesting blog post read, so highly recommend. And then this in more is available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub, mention Anne Engineer on Twitter with hashtag CircuitPython, and also on Mastodon or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is community news. Next up is state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. So this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So first up overall, there were 14 pull requests merged by five authors, and that's Dan Halbert, Brent Rubel, Bill ADAT, Jepler, and Just Mobilize. There were three reviewers, Tan Newt, Dan Halbert, and Maker Melissa. 
There were 19 closed issues by 10 people and eight opened by six people. And next we'll hear about the core from Dan. Okay, thank you. All right, so in the last week, there were seven poll requests merged by three authors and two reviewers. We now have 24 open poll requests, which is less than 25. We try to keep it on one page. There are 25 that fit on a page. And there were 11 closed issues by five people and three new issues opened by three people. That makes for 676 open issues right now. Um, of that, we divide those issues into milestones to say like what release they were hoping they'd be fixed in. Uh, there are a couple of issues in the 10.0.0 milestone, which are things we need to do when we move to 10.0.0. Uh, nothing for 8.2x, nothing for 9.0x, nothing for 9.1.0, and uh, 32 open issues for 9.xx. Uh, there are 22 issues open uh, that have to do with libraries, 600 that are marked long-term, eight that are support, which need uh, more information to determine what's going on with them, maybe, and 14 that depend on changes by third parties. And we don't have any issues right now that are um, that need to be triaged. So uh, we're making progress. The number of closed issues is going up and down, but and we like to get it below, you know, to zero eventually the 9xx issues, but uh, we're slowly getting there. Okay. Great, thanks, Dan. And now we'll hear from Fumigai for the libraries. All right, thank you. Uh, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries, all of which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library uh, that it is will follow that. Um, these libraries tend to be either driver libraries to help you interface with a particular piece of hardware or helper libraries, which allow you to uh, code your project at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the minute details um, on some of the more complex uh, features of CircuitPython. Um, across all those libraries this week, we had six pull requests merged uh, by one author and one reviewer. Uh, thanks to Justin uh, as our author and Dan as our reviewer this week. Uh, I will point out, since we are on uh, the Tuesday, as noted before, because the holiday yesterday, we do skip um, the stats for uh, a, a Monday, for last Monday. So uh, if you did work uh, last week on Monday, we appreciate that, even though uh, it's not listed here this week. Um, the Of the six pull requests that were merged in the last seven days, they're all just one day old. Uh, that leaves us with 61 pull requests open. Uh, the oldest one is a draft that is 649 days, and the newest one is one day. Uh, over the past seven days, we had six issues that were closed by four people, with five new issues opened up by four people. That leaves us with 850 open issues across all the libraries, and uh, of those, there are 102 of them that are labeled as Good first issues, uh, which you can find listed out at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in the CircuitPython project, uh, either in uh, the uh, either in reviewing or submitting and contributing your own code. Uh, we usually point folks towards reviewing first. So on that page at circuitpython.org slash contributing, you can find a list of the open PRs and the open uh, issues. So if you want to get involved in reviewing, you can take a look at those open PRs, find one that you either have an interest in or have the hardware for. Uh, go ahead and click through over to GitHub, take a look at the changes there. If you do have the hardware, go ahead and test it out. Uh, leave a comment on GitHub letting us know that you tried it or you looked it over and what you found. Uh, once you get comfortable with that, we can get you leveled up so that you uh, can leave official reviews over on GitHub. Uh, but the uh, the comments are just as good as well, so don't be uh, discouraged. We definitely appreciate folks uh, taking a look at PRs and leaving comments about, uh, about what they found. Um, if you're ready to get your hands dirty with some actual coding, you can click over to the live, uh, excuse me, to the issues tab on that contributing page. Uh, take a look through the issues again, find something uh, that you either have an interest in or have some hardware for, um, you know, maybe a bug that you want to fix or something like that. You can uh, find that in the list of issues, click through again to GitHub, read about the issue and attempt to make a fix for it and submit a PR uh, with your fix. Uh, if you are new and need help with um, version control uh, using Git and GitHub, we have a guide for that over on the Learn Guide system. 
We also have uh, folks who are around uh, throughout the week here in the Discord who are more than willing to help you if you are trying to contribute or review and need help with any uh, any part of it. So don't be uh, don't be afraid. Come say hi on the Discord. Come ask us if you need any kind of help uh, getting involved. We're going to be more than happy to do that. We want to be able to uh, let everybody be able to contribute no matter what their skill set is or background is. Um, can kind of find a place for anybody. Uh, in terms of the Library Pi uh, PI uh, download stats for PIP, this week we had one, let's see, is that uh, 110,000 uh, and 542 uh, downloads across the 326 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes stock. Uh, if you'd like to take a look at those and then the libraries that are new and updated over the last seven days, it looks like uh, ESP32 Spy, Mini MQTT, and then over in the community bundle, the P1AM200 uh, helpers. And that's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Tim. And now we'll hear from Melissa about Blinka. Hello. Uh, Blinka is our circuit Python compatibility layer for uh, MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. The, and there are currently eight open pull requests amongst all the repositories. Uh, there were two closed issues uh, by two people and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 94 open issues. There were 13,137 Pi PI downloads in the last week. 11,759 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 133 boards. And that's it. Great, thank you. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. And so I will start, I will kick things off with a group hug. You're all fantastic. And now we'll hear from Dan. Okay, um, thanks to Bill8018, James Jano, C. Darius, Retired Wizard, and Joshua Beck908 for uh, checking uh, card pewter um, for requests, testing them, looking them over. Thanks very much, because we don't have those. Maybe Scott has one, but we don't have time to test them necessarily, and we appreciate that testing. Um, thanks to Justin for continuing to work on fixes for network libraries of all kinds. Thanks to Unexpected Maker for noting that the ESP32C6 chip was missing as a ported um, chip in the CircuitPython release notes. And so I fixed that in all the latest release notes uh, just to make it clear. I also noticed that ESP32C2, which is also called ESP8648 or something like that, uh, was also missing. So I added that as appropriate. And that's it. Great, thank you, Dan. And now I'll read for DJ Devin, who's text only, and he has a group hug this week. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thank you. Um, hug reports for me. Thanks to SJEV on GitHub uh, for working on switching the Circup repository over to use pyproject.toml instead of setup.py, uh, kind of a infrastructure type thing, um, but really appreciate them uh, working on that. Um, thanks to uh, Justin, uh, as noted uh, before, for some continued effort on network-related improvements and fixes across several different libraries, and a uh, group hug for everybody. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Now I'll read for Jeff. He has a group hug and also hugs for everyone he saw at PyCon US, including Keith the EE, Ntol, Deshipu, and Tectric. And now we'll hear from Justin. Was totally not ready. Sorry about that. Um, so, group hug uh, for everyone, um, and then Dan specifically for his continued support in all of my pull requests and comments um, on things networking, socket, and MQT related. Great, thank you, and thank you for all your work on the network stuff. And now we'll hear from Melissa. Hello. Um 
I had a hug for Dan for helping me figure out the raw paste mode with CircuitPython and giving me a bunch of resources. And then a hug to Jeff for representing us at PyCon and a group hug for everyone else. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Now I'll read for Tyeth. Big hug for Justin and Dan, taking a deep look into the MQTT and connection timeout issues arising from ESP32 on the Pi Portal Titano, then smashing out a fix and a new beta. And big hug for Melissa, thanks for quickly addressing the web editor CSS breakpoint issue, along with working on it generally at the moment, and Scott for a review and merge. And then I'll wrap up hug reports with Todd Bot. Dan and Jeff for re-reminding me about a uh, de definition for Pico for custom RP2040 boards not recognizing their flash chips. And Deshipu, Jepler, and John Park for interesting discussion of potential sequencer for SynthIO and a group hug. I saw both those conversations go by and they were both very interesting. So, all right, and that's gonna do it for hug reports. Next up is status updates. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. And so I'll get started. Last week, I wrapped up the code for the Ybox 3. And I was able to get three different channels working consistently on the Pico W with DVI output in Arduino. Battled a lot of memory issues there. Um, and then Noah is designing a case for it. And so after that, it's printing as we speak. Uh, I'll wrap up the guide. Uh, and then I've also been working on a few product guides. This morning I published a TRS Trinky guide. Bilbinko of AT Makers will be adding more demos to the guide in the future. They'll be more demonstrative of the ways the boards can be used. And then currently I'm in the middle of the Pixel Trinky guide, um, and that's a little Trinky that has NeoPixel or dot star output on the end with some uh, terminal blocks. And on Friday, right before the long weekend, I got a build working in Arduino to utilize the built-in dynamic lighting in Windows 11. And what I didn't realize initially in my testing, I was using a Circuit Playground Express before the hardware came out to see if it was even possible, um, is that the Microsoft HID library that has this lamp array support in it you need to use the Arduino SAMD board support package instead of the Adafruit SAMD board support package. So I kind of have a hacked build locally to get the Trinky in there. Uh, so for Arduino, I'll provide UF2s in the guide, but more importantly and pertinent to this meeting, because I realize I've just kind of talked about Arduino for a paragraph, um, I'll have CircuitPython support for this so folks don't need to futz around with the Arduino stuff. Um, I already have the device descriptor working, and so then it's just a matter of calling the right command. So fairly confident that'll be all set. And now we'll hear from Dan. Okay, so as mentioned already, I released uh, CircuitPython 905 and 910 beta 3 last week, and they caught up on some things. Uh, I recommend you moving both of them. 905 is not that, uh, you don't have to move that. 910 beta 3 fixes some problems with some frozen libraries and also has a bunch of new changes. Uh, I addressed several 9xx bugs last week. Mostly, a lot of that was investigation. I discovered that some of them were already fixed and I was able to close them. Some ended up being support issues and not really bugs. And other ones I'm still working on and a couple like fixed. Um, I think it was maybe just some documentation changes, at least in one case. And I've been testing a, a bunch of network scenarios, trying to figure out like why are things running at memory or whatever, That's, that work is continuing. There are a lot of different, uh, there's a sort of a whole bunch of different things to test with that. Uh, so I'll, I might, right now my current work is still to work through the 9xx issues and try to get those to zero. Maybe we'll push some of them forward um, and so we can get a 910 stable release app. Okay. All right, thanks, Dan. And now I'll read from for DJ Devin, and then we'll hear from Foamy Guy. So DJ Devin has my iPhone 5 SE spontaneously caught fire while charging on my bed. Yikes, uh, no major damage other than a bedspread. Please don't leave charging phones unsupervised. 
helped test the ESP32 S2 last week. New fixes allow for multiple SSL connections, just like the S3 does now. Someone might want to glance through the learn guides that use the S2 to ensure they have the new connection manager. S2s are working great again. Haven't done much coding this week. Have done a lot of yard maintenance and digging trenches for new irrigation lines. Tis the season for yard work. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thank you. Um, I put some finishing touches uh, on the uh, new pages in the Circup Learn Guide that I was working on. Um, uh, and I think I also owe a couple of folks hug reports. So I'm going to have to look those up uh, and bring them in next week. Because definitely got some help from folks in the uh, in the Discord on that, uh, who I do appreciate. Um, the new pages aren't live yet, but uh, they are ready, I think. I'll probably give them another uh, once over once I have a minute to sit down and read through everything again. And as long as it's all still looking good to me, uh, I'll swap it over. These... New pages cover specifically the usage within Circup, which um, there are lots of new features that were not covered in the old guide because it was written uh, prior to when they got added. So there's lots of new stuff you can do in the new pages, um, give real clear examples and explanations of how all of it works. Um, along with that, I've been working on some changes to the Circup library itself as well. Uh, a couple of them are some small fixes. Uh, when you use the path uh, option in a specific way to a project that doesn't have a, a boot out text file, uh, some of the commands got broken, uh, most likely with some of the refactoring work that I did um, recently. So I've been finding and fixing those issues. Um, sort of separately, but also sort of still connected. I've been uh, working on the tool that we're kind of tentatively calling WW Shell uh, for wireless workflow shell, which is a CLI uh, command line tool for managing files via the web workflow. Uh, at least right now it's web workflow, uh, but could theoretically support uh, BLE or other workflows as they get added. Um, this week I moved the, the existing work that I had done over into Circuit based on some feedback. Um, on the issue, uh, and I have gotten all of the basic commands working except for uh, delete. So downloading, listing, uh, and uploading are all working. Uh, delete's not implemented yet. Uh, and then the other kind of major thing that I still need to do, I know for sure, because uh, I ran pre-commit and saw that there's a bunch of pilot uh, errors. So I need to work through all of those. And then once I do, I will submit that um, for PR uh, this week. Um, Separately, uh, outside of Circup land, the other thing that I got into this week was testing uh, a bunch of old versions of Circuit Python um, to try to figure out where the behavior changed inside of the core uh, with some of the specifics in Display I/O. Um, some of the changes in there led to the flip input widget uh, no longer um, no longer working with its animation. It had a, a very slick. Uh, animation when it was first added. And uh, at, at one point along the way, the actual animation broke, um, but it wasn't crashing. It was just kind of hard cutting instead of animating. And then further down the line, uh, it actually changed again to where it was crashing. So I have uh, kind of been trying to chase those down and figure out what changes are needed either in the library uh, or potentially uh, tweaked back in the core to get that back to working again. Uh, and that is what I've been up to. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Tim. And thanks for updating that circup guide. I'm sure they'll be coming re really handy for folks. Uh, now I'll read for Jeff, and then we'll hear from Justin after that. So, Jeff, last week, PyCon delivered his talk about converting old input devices to USB HID with CircuitPython and demoed the keyboards after in the hallway track, performed two short duets on stage with Sumana Hariharishwara during her closing keynote speech, thanks to a chance encounter of her on Thursday night, Videos for PyCon US 2024 will be released sometime this summer. It's sure to get a mention in the newsletter when it happens. While waiting in airports, I wrote some code for sequencing with SynthIO, but reviewers felt it wasn't pleasant to use and didn't fill the use cases we wanted, so that's shelved for now. This also points at the change method of the synthesizer having poor ergonomics. This week, MP3 decoding from a socket, probably. It was sort of working before PyCon, but playback would stop unexpectedly have to play weird tricks with the socket blocking timeout settings, which is unsatisfactory, has weird interactions with requests, and works with complete mp3 files but fails at soma.fm style continuous mp3 streams. And looking forward to the mp3 stuff and 
congrats again on your talk, Jeffler. And now we'll hear from Justin and then Melissa after that. Yeah, so I continued some work with the mini MQTT updates and its wrappers, the Azure IoT and the AWS IoT. I'm trying to close out a handful of issues that people have had. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, spent a lot of time finding out that the ESP32 spy can only handle one active SSL socket. Um, it returned a super unclear error, um, so made that super clear. So if anyone ever posts something in Discord or anything like that, it would be quick to be able to help them. Um, and as I've continued working through all of this networking stuff, um, I've added two playground notes. Um, might create a package for them at some point, um, but one is a Git radio helper um, that will read things from the settings.toml for pins and everything. And so you can just run it and it'll grab the radio if you only have one or you can specify. And then also based off of something I saw, on a ticket, I created a socket pool logger that will go through and log all of the socket calls. Um, and you can set specifically if you just want send or receive or all of them, um, just kind of show some information on the calls. And it was both really fun to build and to see the results. Uh, feel free to look at those links um, if that sounds interesting to you. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And now we'll hear from maker Melissa. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna find the mute button. Um, let's see. This uh, I was out sick uh, for a few days during the past couple of weeks, but fi I'm finally starting to feel better now. And I added some of the missing boards to CircuitPython.org, and I've been working on the CircuitPython code editor and improving file operations. Uh, currently, I'm finishing up implementing raw paste mode, which is designed for programs to use the REPL. So there's a lot less chatter on the serial, and uh, this may also it may allow uh, even MicroPython boards to work with the code editor, as well as it'll provide a more consistent experience with USB connected devices. And that's uh, what I have. Great, thanks, Melissa. I'm glad you're feeling better. And that was status updates. Next up is in the weeds. So in the weeds is an opportunity for long form discussions to either come out of status updates or the folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any in the weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. And with that, we're gonna hear from Foamy Guy with his in the weeds topics for today. Yeah, thanks Liz. Um, I had a, this question popped up on a PR over in Circup um, and I thought it was, uh, I, I kind of started writing a reply to it and then uh, eventually was asking more and more questions and thought it would be good to just um, stop and talk about it here and see if anyone else has got ideas or thoughts. Um, so in, in this PR, uh, one of the aspects to it was adding a .dev container file into the repo, um, which I was not personally familiar with, but from what I understand, uh, after reading into it a bit, it's kind of like some Docker um, Docker image recipes or, or something like that. I'm not sure the official term, but uh, basically re re recipes that can create a, a Docker container. And then um, from what I understand, VS Code can use these, um, I, I presume probably automatically or associated with a project or something like that. So when you open up the project, it can kind of load you into this whole environment that's all already set up. Um, you know, however these files configure it to be. Um, it, it's kind of an interesting thing, but it's not something I had much experience with. M broadly, more, more broadly, my question is, do we want to include this kind of thing into the library um, repos? Um, personally, I, I kind of lean away from it just because it feels outside the scope of the libraries to me. Um, and it's also kind of just added maintenance because there's a bunch of other libraries and versions and things declared in here that will ultimately, you know, age over time and become deprecated and need to either be updated or will stop working and stuff like that. Uh, and then my other sort of hesitation with it was some of the um, sort of high profile incidents where there have been attempts to kind of shimmy some malicious stuff into open source repositories in some of these sort of ancillary and testing files and stuff like that. I don't really think that's a thing that's happening here, but it does, you know, it was a thing that was on my mind when it got big recently, and it's a thing that makes me kind of shy away from wanting to include 
uh, a bunch of these extra files and stuff like that in the repo. So uh, my core question is kind of, are there folks who use this uh, in the community? Do we want to include them in the in the library repos? And then um, if not, maybe some alternative solutions, like potentially if folks wanted to create these uh, in their own repo and then they could add a link into the into the readme or into the docs uh, markdown file or something like that where we could be kind of pointing folks toward a separate repo um, i think something like that might be a good resource but uh, i am all ears i just wanted to to bring it up and see if anyone else has got thoughts or ideas around those Um, yeah, I don't know any, does it have any use besides VS Code that you know of? Best of my knowledge, no. I mean, the, the Docker containers and stuff, obviously, you can use that outside of VS Code, but my understanding is this kind of specific um, config file is specific to VS Code. Um, that being yeah. said, I only did a very brief kind of reading into it, so possible there's other stuff I mean, out think, there yeah unless we wanted to support it and we all kind of used it you know like we use pre-commit okay so that's and that's a useful right. thing but if that's if this is something that we aren't going to notice when it breaks then yeah I, I think it is a support burden um and i i don't know if somebody wanted to maintain this in their own fork I mean, they just have to be careful to exclude this from being included in any commits, but they can do that. I, I think a similar example, which is much smaller, is that people might have stuff in their own, like git ignores that says, like, ignore these directories and files because they're related to my IDE or my yep. editor. And we would we would tend to tell people, like, don't include that stuff. In 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 the repo, get ignore. Put it in your own private, get ignore. Yep. So okay. I mean, this is repo specific, and the other one isn't so much. But yeah, I would say I would say let's leave it out for now, and okay. you would ask the PR author to to omit it for now okay. because because it's not it's not something that we, we we're going to be able to to test. And keep track of on a regular basis. Anything that's checked in, we assume the support burden of. So, yeah. okay, I will. Um, I will write out uh, a response to there on the on the yeah PR. I mean, and... the, the other developers may have the other okay. core people may have something else to say, but I I kind of agree with your sentiments. I I do agree with your sentiments. Okay. <laughs> uh, I uh, appreciate the appreciate the insight. This has been Circuit Python Weekly for. Tuesday, um, May 28th, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>